Yeah, I know. I don't keep. Yeah, keep talking so I can see. Yes, the, recording. Yeah, all good. All good. Okay, I think I it's see, I can see Armin is recording the call. So yeah. Fantastic. Okay, we're good. All right. So, hi. How are you? How are you, Armin? All right. So um, today we are with Yuval. Am I, am I saying it right? Right. So Yuval is an uh, Israeli, but he's left Israel for a very long time. He lives in Australia, correct? Right. Yep. Uh, but uh, you are very passionate Israeli. You are still, yes. You're still very passionate, and you follow everything closely. And you are a very active member of the Atheist Republic community as well. Um, you contribute so. a lot in, in in a lot of. You correct us many times when we get things wrong. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, well, so I thought the best. So I don't know if people are following the news. But Israel is a mess these days. Is that accurate? Is that, a, is that but, accurate? Uh, yes, but yeah. certain things are actually getting correct. Uh, right. Very, very good news for seculars and atheists in Israel. Just from yesterday, I don't know how much you follow the news in Israel. Okay, I, I follow it. I, I follow it some um, a lot, but probably much less than you. Okay, so I'll tell you. Well, I'll let you educate us. But before we get into the details on what's happening with the secularists, I think we need to do a little bit of a one on one uh, and a little bit of what it, what's been happening in the past few months before for to catch some people up before we can get into what's yes. happening now and how is this good for atheists and secularists, right? So, so you want to you want to do you want me to yes. tell, you know, go? Okay. Uh, no, you you can start. Uh, it's up so my you. my understanding is my understand. Okay, so I don't know. Do you want to just start with t- telling people the yes. first like, what happened with the first election? Why did okay. we have to go with the second election, so, and why we're going to the third election? Right? Yeah. So Israel had election. We're not sure we're going to a thir- third election. Israel had elections in uh, 2019. I think the first one was in April or May. I can't correct me if I'm wrong because I I'm, I'm losing track already. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but Israel had elections about about half a year ago, uh, and then uh, uh, the way it goes uh, in Israel is uh, the parties, uh, you know, each party gets a certain portion of the votes, and yes. then uh, may all mem- members of all parties go to the president and recommend the person they think should form uh, the coalition and right. become the prime minister. If that person manages to form a coalition within 21 days, all good. If not, that person has to go back to the president, give the mandate back, and then the man- the president assigns someone else to do it. How many what seats do you need to do this? 60 something, right? 60. Now, now, Israel has 120, 120 uh, parliament members, Knesset members. So okay. obviously, if you get the support of 61 of them, uh, you, you have a relatively stable coalition, relatively stable coalition. Unlike, for example, Britain, Israel almost always had a hung parliament. That means you never had in Israel, you never had in its history a situation where one party had more of uh, more of, uh, than 60 seats in the parliament. So it was always a, a, the largest party always depended on and was dependent on another party mm. to form a coalition. It's not like in Britain, you know, the labor get more than 50 percent of the vote. That is that's it. It's a labor government. Like a majority government. It, it never had majority. Happened. Israel, it, it's always a hung parliament. Okay. Now, okay. Okay. Now, now that we got that bit right, uh, the last prime minister of Israel uh, was is uh, was Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu uh, is under a, was a, a suspect in at least three corruption cases. Right. And uh, the popular wisdom is he probably say that's not true. The popular wisdom is that he was he was trying every maneuver in the book and outside of the book to remain in power. So the next coalition he forms will pass laws that would grant him immunity from right. those uh, from those charges. Okay, we're what getting ahead of we're getting a little well, bit wait, ahead of well, ourselves. No, okay. no, wait, no. It has to do it has to do with what happened in the in the first elections of this year. So the first elections of this year. Benjamin Netanyahu got uh, got the support of most uh, most parties. The president told him, "Okay, go and try and form, uh, go and try and form a, gov- a coalition." But because this was, was in April 2018, April yeah, uh, okay. 19, yes. Oh, and 19, then, yes. Sorry, 19, yes. 
Yeah, I think you said 18. All of this is happening in 20. All of this is very recent. The first election yeah. was 2019. The second was second in the election 2019. 2019 well. And the third one is probably going to be in 2019 it, as well. We'll, okay. Yeah, if, if okay. there'll be a third one, we'll see. But okay. uh, based, the, we'll probably have them. But now Netanyahu still, because it was still a stalemate in the political system and because of Lieberman that we're going to talk about soon, yeah. uh, Netanyahu, uh, Netanyahu couldn't form a coalition. Now, normally, he would what? go to the president, he would go to the president and say, okay, I couldn't form a coalition, here's the mandate, give the mandate to someone else. Mm -hmm. But Netanyahu didn't want that, because he was afraid his rivals could, would form a coalition. So instead, he had the Knesset vote for another election within a few months. So he won't have to give the mandate back to the president, and he was hoping that he would gain... So, so no, before you go, so that the yes. first election, he got how many, so how many seats did he get? He got... Oh. I got, uh, wait, I have to check the exact seats. It he was got 30 something, I think it was 35, if my memory serves me right. Right. But uh, then he like, he's like, so if you can't form it because he didn't have enough seats, just l like usual, uh, mm -hmm. he needed to rely on some other parties to be able yes, to form a government. Exactly. But because he didn't have. He, Nobody, nobody. He didn't manage to get enough. That that made him desperate, and then that's why he used. He got united with a lot of far right groups, right? Far right uh, parties. He got united not with in for, towards the the elections of uh, September. He got he united with the center right party, not with a far right party. Center, but religious, but religious party. Uh, right? No, 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 no. He wasn't united. He didn't get united with the religious party towards. Oh, the, that happened in the second one. Yes, that okay, happened okay. right now. That happened right, all right now. All right, all right. So sorry. So so he didn't get enough seats, but usually they're like, oh, the president is like, okay, so if he can't form a government, we're gonna go with someone else. Nathaniel yes. is like, no, forget that. Um, elections yes. again. But this the second election ended up being worse for him. Right? Exactly. So the, the second elections were worse for Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. uh, he's even he was even in a, in a tougher spot, uh, and then and. He had 30, guess, how many? 30? Uh, he 32. Went, I think he had 32, where with blue and white, his major rivals had 33. So they had only one seat uh, more than him. Um, but, uh, but in terms of forming a coalition, you need 61. In terms of forming yeah. a coalition, he had but, a hard but, time. And he, and the he first had election, for several reasons. The, the first election, he had more seats than the... Yeah, uh, let me, I'll tell you exactly how much he had, because I'm just opening right now as we speak, so I, I, I don't want to get the numbers wrong, because every seat here is... Uh, every seat here so, counts. This, yeah, and this... <laughs> this is like so, like, neck and neck. It's so... Every seat, like, counts. Yeah, yeah. So, so the first... The, 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 uh, the, the elections for the 21st parliament, that was the 9th of April, mm. right? Uh, he had 35 okay. seats and blue and white had 35 seats. Right? Okay. 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 Now the elections the of... Uh, yeah. The and second the one, one was... The what, second what, what, one, mm -hmm. the second one he lost, he, he had 32 seats and, and uh, blue and white had 33 seats. So blue and white had more than him. And what, what, what month was this? What month was this? That was September. So we had one election in April and then right. another election in September. September. Now we're yes. gonna go for a third one. This is his. This has never happened in Israel's history. Oh, no, okay? no, 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 <laughs> no, never, ha never happened. Uh, and and uh, I, I guess, I guess we need to get to the background of the election more because normally election in Israel would be based on some kind of ideological background. Some, you know, uh, some people want to have a two-state solution, and then others think no, or something like that. But in these elections, were basically around whether Netanyahu should keep on being prime minister or not. Right. So this is the first election where the whole Palestinian thing is not as much of the discussion. No, as no. Used to. This is more, no. this is, this is the first time that that's not even being talked about as much. Like, no, he, no. He, yeah, sorry, go on. No, go ahead. Is that correct what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Yeah. Because, because a uh, fortunate well, unfortunately, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. The it appears that mo the Israeli pub public has shifted to the right, mm. uh, so the left has dwindled. The the left regret I personally regret for me, obviously because I'm a lefty. The left has dwindled. Uh, just so you have a notion, the Labour Party, that's the party that ruled Israel for consecutive 29 years from its beginning. The Labour Party now has five percent of the votes. 
Okay, right? so they're they're not irrelevant. They had it. They had the. Yes. They they ruled Israel for how many years? Twenty. They they ruled Israel from 1948 until 1977, and they they've dwindled. They've dwindled okay. to. They've dwindled now to five percent of the votes. So right? that they're irrelevant now. But so just to keep for just doing a one on one that we have right now, Netanyahu's party is a Likud party, right? That's correct, uh, and that's that's the, and the other the blue and white or the white and blue. Blue, blue and white. Blue and white is what's his name? Gantz, 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 right? Benny Gantz. Okay, so Netanyahu is the leader of the Likud party, and Gantz is the leader of the blue and white party, and these are the yes. two p- main players. Okay, everybody else is just a side party, but they become very important because neither Likud or blue and white. Is uh, they're not working with each other, so they have to go beg these all these lo- small little parties yes. to please yes. come join us so we can form a government because Lakud and Blue and White are not working with each other and they yes. refuse to work with each other. But now, they also have, correct me if I'm wrong, they have different reasons why they're not working with each other. Exactly. Uh, the, the, the reason why Blue and White is not working with Lakud is because Blue and White promised, promise is meant for uh, the people that voted for the Blue and White is that they will not. Work with Netanyahu, given that and he now, has cor- because he has corruption and there's an indictment yes, coming. Yes. So they're, they're they're telling like we will form a unity government with Lakud only if Netanyahu. only if Netanyahu steps back and exactly and Netanyahu is like saying no, I'm not stepping back. Yes, the, the reason why Lakud is not working with Blue and White is what? Well, <laughs> well, the main the main reason is Netanyahu doesn't want to go. That's the main reason. And he's That's being very it. selfish. Like he, the only reason why Netanyahu doesn't want to go is because he knows that he needs to be prime minister if he doesn't want to go. If he doesn't want to go to court, if he doesn't want to go yes. to jail. Yes. But for yes. everybody else, this is political. For Netanyahu, this is very, very, very personal. Very, it's very, very personal. But the thing with Netanyahu, look, Netanyahu, first, first of all, uh, personally, is a very intelligent person. He's, he's, he's very bright, and regrettably, part of his brilliance. Uh, manifests in the way that he managed to uh, to do PR, you know, mm-hmm. for uh, and to and to influence people's minds, and he's managed to influence a lot of people in Israel to believe that first of all, it's all a deep state conspiracy against him, and secondly, <laughs> right. and secondly, it's all it's all the just you know the courts are against him and all this all this uh, the media is against him. Every, yeah, everybody, but not not you, the people. You, the people, you support me. The only problem is. Is those guys in the court, those lefties in the court, and and those lefties in the media, and they they are against me. Not you, the people. You support me, uh, so he managed to push this agenda. The second thing he managed to persuade a lot of Israelis that he is really the best person to lead Israel. Right. And God forbids if if he won't lead Israel, God knows what's going to happen. Oh yeah, because the whole no, thing no one, right. Yeah, he's like irre, irre, irreplaceable. That's no. why he wants. That's why he like likes a war with Iran because he wants people convince people that without him, the enemies are just going to come and just take I'm, over. I'm Israel. not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's his best card because mm-hmm. who is running against him in blue and white? Three uh, very respected generals, mm-hmm. a, a former deputy head of the Mossad. So <laughs> the people, the people, the people in blue and white, the and they, and this is an anomaly. This is quite an anomaly in Israeli politics. Uh, you'd have the right wing support the right wing, whereas a lot of the top brass in the army and top Mossad and top uh, Shin Bet, the secret, secret service, there they once they leave their jobs, they all most of them lean to the left or center left. Right. So. Right. So and the, and this always an anomaly. So usually in other countries, uh, the right wing supporters, they would follow a military figure, you know, some military charismatic military figure in Israel. The fact that the generals mostly support the left wing or the center left doesn't convince right wing hard die, uh, you know, die hard right wing supporters to shift sides. They will stay in the right and they will come right. up with all kinds of excuses why those generals actually get it wrong. Right. Now I want to go back to the fact I want to go back to the fact that today most of Israeli society is is right and center right and not left. That on what the result of that was that you don't talk about the Palestinian issue anymore. If you don't talk about the Palestinian issue anymore, you start talking about other things, corruption, religion and state, all kind of things that that before were very easily brushed under the carpet because 
because you say, oh, if you vote to these guys, you know, they want to go with the Arabs, they want to give land to the Palestinians, whatever. Right. Now this debate is over, unfortunately. So right. over, so, then people start thinking about other stuff because because they vote, they would say, oh, so, I can't. But that, that's not, Netanyahu wants them to focus on the Palestinian issue, right? Uh, I think he does, but he's more security very issues. Yeah, but yeah. but he's not very clever at it because people mm -hmm. start understanding that he's not the best person to protect Israel. He's actually Netanyahu now is responsible for delivering monthly fifteen million dollars to Hamas. Every month, Hamas gets fifteen million dollars because Netanyahu facilitates it. If Netanyahu okay. wanted, he could have stopped it, right? People who live near the Gaza Strip in Israel, they they are receiving um, you know they are they are subject to rocket attacks for years right for years now uh, and recently so, recently we had around 300 of them coming in from uh, just how many days ago that I've, was pretty I've, I've lost honestly I've lost count I'm not counting right. anymore it's, oh, okay. it's just it's just no it's just a natural you know yeah. it's just you know some countries have malaria and southern israel has rockets you know it's it's uh, that that's how but but I, it was one thing I would just want to emphasize one more time. The reason why the blue and white party is not working with Lakud is because they, they want Netanyahu to step down before they form yes. a majority government with them. And the reason why Lakud is not working with uh, blue and white is because it's Netanyahu is like, I'm not going to step down. Yes. Um, and, but, here, but here's the thing. They could they could make a government in tomorrow if Netanyahu is stepped down. Uh, Absolutely. He, if he steps down. Like, Absolutely. there is no, Lakud would be willing to work with blue and white and blue and white would be willing to work with Lakud as oh, yes. if nothing who just steps down and they're gonna have a government blue so he's white, only, yeah blue so and he's, white is full with is, has a lot of right-wing people in it blue blue okay. and white some people in blue and white are more right-wing than netanyahu so the he's only, basically the netanyahu, only unifying the only unifying agenda of blue and white is getting rid of netanyahu that's the only thing that puts all those guys together some of them are wow. really left-wingers some of them are really right-wingers the only thing that put all those people together is their desire to get rid of Netanyahu. Okay, because no, there's never been in history of Israel that somebody with the with almost he's not a, has he get, is he under indictment already or no? Like yes, it's come, yes. Okay. Now now yes. Now he is. Yes. Okay, so from, from, it's never had an like it's it's kind of bizarre for somebody that is under indictment to be to be prime minister. That's people are like, what the hell's well, going on? Right. But, it's but especially bizarre. It's especially bizarre because when Netanyahu's predecessor, Ehud Olmert, was under indictment, guess who was the guy who said, "If you're under indictment, you cannot be a prime minister." Netanyahu. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So Netanyahu, Netanyahu gave this. I think you can still find it on YouTube. Said, "A prime minister under indictment cannot serve as a prime minister anymore." Blah blah blah. You know. And well, guess who is a prime minister under indictment now? Right. So he's basically holding the entire country hostage so that he can stay out of jail. Uh, pretty much. Yes. I think that's a, that's an accurate depiction. <laughs> he, he would say he would say, of course, that he's not doing it because of that. He would say that he's, uh, you know, it's all a deep state. He's all he doesn't use the term deep state, but so it's all. Uh, what did he say? He said the, the police tailored tailored the case for him. And the the state's uh, state's attorney, uh, general attorney, and the and the police. Now the funny thing is, the police chief was his nomination. He nominated the police chief. Right. He, he took a guy. He took a guy that wasn't even a police officer. He put him in the police chief because he, he thought he'd work with him. The the government's legal counsel, Israel. It's not a general attorney. It's another function. I'm not going to get too much into it. But it's, it's, it's kind of like general attorney, right? Okay. Uh, no, a ge general attorney. A government legal counsel is the person in Israel who who supervises the legal aspects of the government activity. Okay, so okay, he's okay. The guy, He's yeah, the guy okay. that comes to the government. Never, never. That, yeah. Okay. So the government legal legal counsel, the one who decided uh, on the indictments two days ago. That's Netanyahu's nomination. Netanyahu yeah. put him there. Now, and now he comes and says, oh, it's all a conspiracy against him. So God, every, I mean, you so know is, all yeah, so every person, all the main people that are putting pressure on him for all the illegal shit that he's done, they're all his, the people that he picked. So it's really hard to believe. So why is it that so many of his fans still believe that this is a, like, this is a conspiracy against Netanyahu? Like, uh, did, how is it? Very like, hard. All, huh? Very hard to explain. Very hard to explain. I I cannot. It's it's like I ask you to rationalize a religion for a religious person. You know yeah. you cannot. You know. Okay. I mean, unless I honestly, I just had a conversation yesterday, a chat conversation with a with a, a an acquaintance of mine. Right. And and she's 
she is absolutely con actually I can explain why she thinks that way. So Israel has a history of less left wing dominance of all the establishments in the 50s, in the 60s, a bit in the 70s. The left wing uh, dominated all the government's offices. It dominated the labor union. It was very hard to do anything in Israel if the gov left uh, left wing establishment didn't approve of you. Very hard to get a job. Very hard to 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 start uh, to do anything you wanted to, to do. People who have still memories of that period, let's say their parents, like that friend that I'm take, telling you now about, her father at the time, because he was a right winger, suffered because the left wing establishment was everywhere, wherever he wanted to go. Mm. People who have those memories of the 50s and the 60s, where the Labour Party pretty much controlled everyone's life, mm. now would believe, are, are, are likely to believe that this still goes on. Mm. And and they're likely to think, oh, okay, yeah, I remember, like my dad told me, when he wanted to get a job because he wasn't a member of the labor union, when he wanted to go there because he wasn't a member of the party. Yeah, it makes sense that it still goes on. But uh, so you have those people, but you have other people that I think simply won't bring themselves to admit it's not true because then they'll have to bring themselves to admit that they supported a habitual liar and a fraud for many years and it's very hard for someone to come to terms with that yeah and that's why the polls there were some polls that showed that even after the uh, indictment comes uh, goes through they ask a lot of sub people that uh, voted for Netanyahu if they would change their vote and most of them would not change their vote There's, like there was very little change according to that poll even after uh, after the indictments but we don't know if it's that's going to be true because in in reality people might actually change their behavior if they're saying like this is the third election like come on right so people uh, might yeah might yeah, change people, their vote people might change first of all uh, you had very prominent figures in the Likud party uh, that came and said before the September election we are not going to vote Likud and when i'm saying prominent figures i'm saying for uh, i'm mentioning for example Benny Begin. Benny Begin is the son of Menachem Begin. He was an iconic, the iconic prime minister of Likud. Menachem Begin, there is no Likud member who doesn't like Menachem Begin. His son came and said, I'm not going to vote Likud this time. Uh, and other, other members of the party. So uh, you won't see people, I don't think you'd see people shifting their vote, but you might see people not just staying at home and not going uh, to vote. Do you and that would... Yeah, sorry. That that would remove reduce the seats for the local yeah. party. Okay, yes. the election. Yes. Okay. Is there an internal conflict within it? Like, are there some people within the Likud party that might want to like overthrow Netanyahu? Yes. Now, okay. they, they were always silent. Netanyahu held the Likud with an iron fist uh, in the last, you know, I, I, during his years. But now you start hearing voices of. Uh, Actually, a few months ago, he said, uh, how about if we have a primaries? And then one of his rivals said, yeah, I'm ready. The minute the other guy said, I'm ready, Netanyahu uh, took this idea off the table. Wow. And, okay. and there were no primaries. So uh, he has, Netanyahu has at least two, I think he has two rivals. Uh, I don't, I'm, what I think will happen, they will wait for him to, to step aside and then they will start why, fighting. Over the, why, why are they waiting for him? Why are they not just rebelling and be like, I, get the hell out of here, you're holding the whole country hostage? I, I think he's, he's, he has too much, he's very dominant within the party mechanism. So uh, within the party assembly, uh, we call it center in Israel, within the party, party assembly, these are the party members that vote. I think he's very dominant there. And it takes it takes a, a degree of skill and courage to try and face him on this particular court, right. in this so, particular arena. I think that's that's the main reason. What Netanyahu did very cleverly, he managed to remove each and every person that might have might threaten him as a potential leader, and he surrounded himself with people that uh, I don't want to be rude, so I would just say that they are probably not very competent. And and often Be quite rude, embarrassing. Right. No, well, no, you know, I mean, I'm I'm a gentle person by nature, but uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> they're not very competent uh, to the degree that they can be quite embarrassing. So uh, so now there are not that many opponents within the Likud. You have two. One is the mayor of Jerusalem. He's very charismatic. He's very competent. A, a former high tech entrepreneur. Another one was is Gidon Saar. He was active in the party. Then he stepped aside, stayed at home, probably waited for the right time to come back. Now, now they talk about him coming back to the party. 
so they start talking about people that that might challenge Netanyahu. I don't know if it's going to happen. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Uh, so yeah, so sorry, let's yeah, go. go. Let's go to the so the two the two main parties. But now, given that they can't form a government, other parties become very important. And yes. the three the three smaller parties that now are becoming part of this whole power play in the in the past two election uh, is the you know Lieberman's party. What's his party called? Uh, Israel is our home. Israel, Israel is our home. Israel is yeah. our home. Is our, Israel our home, yes. Israel our home. So that the Lieberman, that guy, that's the more secular one. We'll get to him. And then yeah. the Arab, the Arab party. What is that one called? Which, which one? Sorry. The Arab one. The, the Arab. Arab. One, the, the, ah, the, the, the United List. I think I don't know how you call it in English. You're talking about the Arab, the Arab, uh, the Arabic one, right? Yes. United what? The United in Israel, you call the those who run to the parliament. You call them lists because you can have several parties for, forming one okay. list of candidates. So they, the reason is the reason why they call them United List is because they used to be a whole bunch of different Arab three. parties. There were three of them, mm. and they ran separately. And ideologically speaking, other other than them being Arab, actually the communist one, they're not officially they're not Arab. They're Arab Jewish, but practically most of them are Arabs. That's an interesting story by itself. Uh, anyway, ideologically they were they were different. Very different. What, one one was a uh, one was Israeli Arab with an Islamist flavor, like Islamist uh, parliament members. One was communist, and one was Palestinian nationalist. And then, but this in September they chose to re reunite again. They ran separately in in April. They okay. united again, and they got an unprecedented achievement of thirteen yeah. seats. Yes, thirteen seats. Members. Okay, so okay, let's let's just okay. First of all. It's already very bizarre to have a for a lot of people to have an Arab group that is communist in Israel, but uh, but communism is big in the Middle East. Okay, so if uh, uh, yeah. actually the reason I don't know how much you want to get into, there is a nope. very but, interesting but, historical reason why the communists were strong amongst the Arabs. Well, I don't. I, no, let's I not get, it, let's yeah, not get into that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. another interesting thing, just to touch on it, is like you have a Palestinian nationalist group, which yes. is strange that the, uh, Israel allows. A party that is loyal <laughs> to the loyal to your enemy. Like, imagine if, like, you know, United States had a party called the uh, Lo Iranian Loyalist Party. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, like, it's so. Why is that party allowed in well, Israel? I, I don't think. I don't think that officially they call themselves Palestine. We are the Palestinian National right. Party, but it's quite yeah. obvious. Look, it's the, even the logo is look, kind of the Palestinian flag, isn't it? Uh, like. The, the colors. I the colors. Remember. The colors for sure. I can't remember the logo. But look, yeah. the Ahmed Tibi, the member of the of another party, he was officially he was Yasser Arafat's advisor. That was his job. Okay. And at, at the time that he was a parliament member, he was also Yasser Arafat's advisor at the same time. Right. So yes, we either Israel allows it, uh, so, but I think it makes things more interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, to say the least. But so we had these three Arab groups. The first election they weren't together. The second election they decided to join together as an Arab, as you know, uh, as yes. an Arab group. And I think the reason. So a lot of Arabs in Israel they don't vote because they used to not vote because they say like who cares? Nobody cares about our voice. We vote, nothing changes. If we vote, we're legitimizing this government. So that that was their arguments for not voting. But I think the reason. Correct me if I'm wrong. The reason why this time they came out and voted with much higher numbers than anybody uh, predicted. One was because all the Arabs. Uh, parties got together, but second because because of Netanyahu kept on saying like, oh, these people are our enemies, are our enemies. They're gonna come vote. They're gonna destroy the country. And a lot of Arabs, I think, like, well, is this what you don't want us to do? Then we'll go vote. If like, if uh, you're, a, I think he encouraged them to go vote by demonizing them so much. Uh, I think look, Netanyahu is a bit more clever than than say things in the crude in the crude way that you said. So. He did he, say that. He specifically he, said. No, in, he said. He said what he, what he said in nineteen in two thousand fifteen was the Arabs are moving in droves to the ballot. The yeah. left wing the left wing charities are bringing them with buses. But now, that's too direct. Yeah. That's more direct yeah. than what I said. No, 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 no. But he never he, like he would never say Arabs are enemies to the country because he's more clever than that. So but I didn't. 
Did I say that? No, I, 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 I didn't. Think, I think you said. I, I think you meant you said something along those lines, or, or he, he uh, said he, something a bit more hostile than okay. he would never say. He but would never just, say directly. Said, okay, a but hostile he, thing about all Arabs. He's more clever than that. So he would say the bad but, things about the leaders. He would also, say that they are moving in droves. He would say and and everything he, but saying the Arabs are the enemy. The enemies, the people that are terrorists. So he's, he considers Arab citizens of Israel, he keeps on suggesting that they are on the side of, they're against Israel, even though they're citizens of Israel, even though he's they're very, voting. He's, yeah. very sly, he's very sly and double-talking about it, and uh, okay. he, he, he's, he's too clever to say it as, as directly as you just said, but okay. he genera- ge- definitely creates the, the, the impression and the momentum in the public but uh, what, along the, those lines. But, but what I'm saying is that the effect of that might have been that the Arabs should, so like came out and vote uh, as a response to what all the fear mongering that he was doing. Could, right? could be, I don't know. That's a speculation. But to be more accurate, the Arabs used to vote uh, used to vote in Israel elections, but let's say in the 80s they used to vote for parties, even Zionist parties, even religious parties that they thought would take the home office, the Ministry of Interior, after the election, because that means that they, their municipality or the local village might get budget. So they could come and say, oh, you see, we voted for you guys, uh, so how right. about you give us some budget? But now, but then, uh, and then you had the Arabs that voted for, you, the, for the communists. That was a long time ago. Uh, in the 80s and the 90s, it started shifting, and you had more and more Arabs voting ideologically for Arab, yeah. so to speak, Arab, ag- Arab agendas. Uh, and, and, then, and, yes. and another thing, another thing is that no. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about this. No, <clears throat> no non-Arab party in Israel, whether it was Likud or the um, Labor or Blue and White or whatever, it, it was considered political suicide to work with the Arab parties, right? With the, Until with the Arab parties. With the Arab parties, yes, not the some of them had Arab their own Arab candidates. So, yes. for example, no, they had their own Arab candidate, but they wouldn't go and like, yes. hey, Arab party, like, we wouldn't work with the Arab parties. That yes. would be like, that would be that was a huge taboo. That's right? like, yeah, that's a, that was a that taboo. Was, no, they, no, yeah, they're like a, the pariah of Israeli politics. And uh, so recent and, though, isn't the blue and white party now like playing foot now? With- now, and that's that's another interesting thing that happened in these elections. Now, when, when people saw that there might not be a unity government because Netanyahu is going to stay, you started hearing more voices about, hey, why don't we form, why don't we form a government, a minority government, but the Arab parties will support us from the outside? Why won't we get to that kind of an agreement with them? They're a legitimate part. Suddenly, start, people start talking about them because as legitimate. Because they're desperate, because they were so desperate, so they're looking at the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think Netanyahu. I, I give it to the. I give credit to Netanyahu that thanks to him, he, he him being so corrupt helped legitimizing uh, the Arab politicians. Which so, is a good thing. Like I think, yeah. the, I think the more you legitimize the Arab parties, the more the Arab uh, community in Israel is going to see themselves as part of the country. The Look, more they I, might I'm, see the, the, a way out of this whole... The, I'm, the, not a big, I'm not a big fan of the Arab politicians and the leaders of those I'm, parties. I'm not either, but there needs to be some representation for the Arabs no, no, in Israel. Oh, no, absolu- absolutely. The, and, uh, absolutely. I, just, I, I, I personally find them a bit disingenuous. I don't think they speak similarly in Hebrew and in Arabic. I think when they speak to Arab crowds, they're, they're a bit far more... Right. Far less accepting of Israel than they are when they speak to to general Israeli crowd, but at the same time, they they represent their public. They right. have the right to represent their public, uh, and in that sense, I, and if, I we less, if we want less support for violence, we need to give people other avenues. That's what I'm thinking, right? Like we need to give other alternatives, even if it's like even if their language is like really hostile. I think that it's better than not having. It's better for the Arab citizens of Israel to have an outlet of, rep- of pres- you know, of I, be- don't, I don't think I don't think they are the best way to, uh, yes. to reduce yes. violence. The Arab public in Israel of Israeli Arabs was especially in the, in the context of the conflict that's going on. But gener- also generally was one of the least violent. I mean, of course, no, you had the I, crime. No, no, the, I, of course, I was, of course I was never suggesting. I was never suggesting that the Arabs in Israel are violent, but they have sympathies for some groups in Palestine, some of them. Yes, and the, the, what, 
there were there was a lot of violence in 2000. This I have to say, but as a rule, up until the up until the 2000s, they were one of, one of the least politically speaking the least violent minorities that you can think of in the context of a conflict. Not many terrorists from Israeli Arab citizens, uh, not many attacks as as such. Uh, right. But and I don't and I'm not sure that the Arab political leadership is the reason. I actually think they they might be the reason for more violence. That's my personal opinion. Okay. But that's okay. a different story. That's a different discussion. But, but like when I was in Israel, I talked to a lot of Arab Isra um, Arab Israelis, and a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them consider themselves Palestinian first, and Israeli either second or not Israeli at all, even though they're Israeli yeah. citizens. They don't even consider themselves Israel, but not all of them. So that I think that mentality needs to change by having some legit, uh, you know, and maybe maybe these Arab uh, parties will become less um, aggressive if they ha they feel like they have a seat on the table. Maybe for the sake of playing politics, they'll change their tune. I don't I don't think so, and I'll no. tell you why. A uh, one of the tragedies one of the tragedies of Israeli Arabs or Israeli Palestinians is that they're considered potential traitors by everyone. So uh. Israelis, Israelis look at them and say, ah, oh, no, you, you pro you're too pro-Palestinian for us. Uh, we, we, you, you're not really loyal Israelis. Palestinians outside of Israel and Arabs outside of Israel look at them and say, you guys have Jewish friends. You make money out of your business with the Jews. Right. You enjoy you enjoy the Israeli the, all the services of the of the Zionist state. Right. You're not really Palestinian. Yeah, we we Palestinian. don't think you're, you're a true Palestinian. And so they are they are really, they are trapped, rejected, they're really reject trapped there. So they're rejected by Palestinians and they're rejected by Israelis. Uh, from what I understand, yes. From yeah, what okay. I understand, there is a when when an, when an Israeli Arab goes outside and meets other Arabs, there is a huge burden of proof on mm. them. Mm. Uh, and and you can if they vote. I think if they vote, that's like holy sh like holy crap, man! You guys, you guys are supporting this. Yeah, regime. so you part you part of the game. A so part of them. you are, you, you the, the the argument within within the arms was, are we going to be part of the game or not? And then the the response was, those who did encourage voting, they said, you you want you don't want to vote, so you're like a guy who wants to win the lottery without even filling the ticket. Right. So, so, so how, okay. you know, how do you want anything to change if you're not even willing to go and vote? Right. So, OK, so let's uh, that was the Arab party. Uh, then we had yes. the Liberman Israeli Liberman, call. Yes. And then I also want to talk about the religious right, the religious right wing party. Ah, with the, the Likud they, just guys. United, they just united with the uh, with the Likud a, a week ago. You're talking about Bennett, Bennett and uh, and Smotrich and these guys. I don't know their names. Like they, there's a whole bunch of religious ones that he got. You had it. two. You had two. Re, two right wing religious parties. Uh, of course, you had the ultra orthodox. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking the the Zionist, so to speak, uh, uh, right wing uh, religious right wing parties. So you had one that was very radical uh, with elements of Jewish supremacy, uh, b uh, followers of the Kahana Rabbi Kahana. If you ever heard of him, they they didn't get into the parliament. They didn't get enough vote. You had another one uh, with uh, with uh, Naftali Bennett, with Ayelet Shaked, uh, with Smotrich, uh, right? Uh, you know, which one? Support which the one? Party, sorry, yeah. Which is the religious party that was the main factor with, with, that uh, Netanyahu got united with, trying to get the seats that yeah. he won? Which one is yeah, the main? So one? now that happened right now. Uh, that was. Uh, <laughs> Gosh, I forget the name because they split and, and unite all the time. I keep forgetting right, the name. Yeah, that was yeah. the one. That was I just call them the one of Naftali Bennett because it'd be the, ben. it'd be the easiest one. They're probably going to change name ten times by the end of this talk. So, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> but but why why are you saying that just happened yesterday? I thought in the second election in September there were also. No 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 no. He united what he did. That, that was enough. That, there were two other parties that Netanyahu united with. Was the election of September? Uh, right. One one was uh, was was led by uh, Moshe Feiglin. That was a libertarian part, presented itself as a libertarian party, 
and but another, they are religious. All of them. Uh, are... The lead, the leader was the leader was a, a right wing religious person. Okay, so, the, so so this whole religious angle of it is a bit too many little groups. But let's just say to simplify it because I don't want to get into too much detail. Uh, that Lakut Netanyahu, both in the in the second election, and now he tried to unite with different uh, religious right wing groups. Yes, yes. So just to simplify things, so th- there's no one name for it. They keep changing and they keep re- designing yeah. parties. Give, but give he me was, one second, and I'll tell you the name of the current run. But he, but but the whole idea is that so. This is kind of like the mirror image of each other, right? If we accept that the blue the blue and white party was looking into this whole the Arab party and trying to see if we're like, hey, can we maybe can you help us out here? We need to make a government. They, and, they actually they actually did help them a bit in this procedure, but but if right. you, if we have time later, remind me, I'll tell you what. It's one extreme, like based on you know what's norm in Israel. But also, you had the Likud party looking at the very religious right wing people, and like, "Hey, please help us out. We need some help to form a yes. government, right?" Yes. So, also in the second, just to clarify another thing, in September, in the second election, um, even though the blue and white party had the more seats than uh, Likud, more seats than Netanyahu, the president still went to Netanyahu first and asked him if he could form a government. He gave him some time, and yeah. he failed, even though he had less seats than the blue and white. And then he failed, and yeah. then he went to the blue and white party, and like okay, he correct. went to Gantz, and he's like, okay, now you have some time to form a government. Yeah. And then they failed as well, and that's yeah. now now right at the end of that. Okay. Like he, 21 okay. so days. What's happening, what's happening now is, now you have a period of, of 21 days right. where the law says whichever... Knesset member that can get can rally 61 behind him. Anyone. He, he will form. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's but not like the president. Say, the president is like the president is saying, okay, I've you, you know, I've given up. So you have 21 days to come up with anything. If not, we have another election. So you have to introduce people when you say Knesset, you mean the parliament, right? The parliament, sorry, yes. The parliament. Knesset it means parliament in Israel. But so usually you go to the person that won the election. And if that fails, you go to the second guy. Yeah. But now, now you have another 21 days that now we're in that period that is all up for grabs. Anybody yes. in the parliament, if yes, you can, can get 61 seats to support you, then we'll yeah. form a government. But that is very, very unlikely. If the Likud party can't do it, and if the Blue and White party can't do it, it's very, very unlikely. Now- or anybody yes. else in the in the parliament. Now, now the reason the reason ne- Benny Gantz got more that's seats, and that's why it's very very likely that we're going to go for a third election. But yes. go on. Go on. Now right. the re- there is an interesting reason why why did the president give Netanyahu uh, the first the first go? Uh, usually it goes according to the number of people who recommend you, number of Knesset members that would support you. Benny Gantz got more support. That when, when parties went to the Knesset, the Arab party came to the president and said, we're giving our support to Benny Gantz. So Benny Gantz was just about to get the first go. But then they realized that they might fail and they will have to give it to Netanyahu. So Benny Gantz, apparently, that's, that's what people suspect. He went to the Arab party and said, guys, you're actually putting me in a, in a difficult position. We'll have to please, if you could do something to withdraw your support, let's give Netanyahu the first go and let him fail. And then the uh, then the uh, Arab party then the Arab party came to the to the president again. Oh, oh, sorry, three of our members they don't support guns. They will not support guns. So so count, you know rub off three of the three of our members from the support list. And right. then then Netanyahu got the first go, and, and he failed. Like, yeah. But, so it's but, like but, it's like but, there is a situation in chess where no one wants to make the second the, the next move. Every, each player wants to make the the other player wants the other player to make the first uh, move. Okay. So, but by yeah. but by the blue and white party by ta- by them talking to the Arab parties and trying to work with them, yes. um, Netanyahu has also like raised the alarm on this. Like, look, they're the blue and white party is talking to our enemies, like something. Yeah, like, I, but not directly. But he's been raising like, isn't he like trying to fearmonger like? About that, yeah, he's trying, but I think he's losing. He's losing his talent at doing that because he did. Not, but he did it's say not that. working. It's not working anymore. It's not working anymore, and you can see that because he lost. He lost seats. Uh, it, yeah, pro, 
I can't remember if he did, but it sounds saying, very, you, ca- very, very logical. It sounds very much sounds like him. So if like you heard, that, if you heard, yeah. they probably did. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like why, like the blue and white party is talking to people that are that are against Israel, right? Which is a very sad thing to say about people that is in the party of your own kind. Like, okay, but he might be. But but we need to get into the third. So we talk about the Arab party. We talk yes. about the religious parties yes. and the far right. Yeah. But now the most important smaller party yes. that is relevant to us as atheist republic yes. Yes. is the Liberman's party, which Lieberman. is the home party, which is the secularist, right? Well, How- uh, he prete- well that's his that's his banner now. That that's that's his brand now. That he's this, he's he he doesn't say I'm a secularist. Says I want a Jewish state, but I don't want a religious state. So I so that that's his uh, motto. And then and Lieberman said, look. Our party will support a unity government only mm-hmm. that will allow public transportation in the Sabbath, recruit the ultra orthodox to the army, uh, and will open an avenue to marry outside of the rabbinical court. And, well, and that's very important. Let's, let's repeat this because these are very anti orthodox religious. Yes. And these are like this, these are the three things that you mentioned. Are the three things that the Orthodox Jewish community in Israel has been fighting for for years, yes. and this guy comes out like, "Oh, we only work for somebody that goes against all of this." So, sa- like, so screw the Sabbath. Public, People should work yes. at the Sabbath, and then what else? Public public transportation in the Sabbath, marriage, a civil marriage. So you won't have to depend on the rabbinical courts to marry. Okay. Wow. And recruiting and recruiting, uh, passing a law that recruits the ultra orthodox youth to the That's army. Huge. That is the most sensitive one, right? Is it, isn't that the most sensitive one? Like the, the orthodox yes, because, people, they because don't want once, to be able to once you take once you take the young generation out of the cult for three years, you you know the cult is broken. Wow. You, imagine imagine if you can come to any cult and take their younger generation away from them for three years. It's going to ruin the cult. So these are these these sounds that's how many the, the all of this sounds beautiful like this music to my ears but yes. what are, what how many seats do they have Lieberman's now party they, now they have eight seats now the, the, the thing well, the thing is so well that's okay the arabs did so well okay go on. now the thing is with with lieberman people say uh, and also when i put the video in atheist republic videos people said uh, oh why are you celebrating lieberman lieberman is a hero i don't think he's a hero I think he's a very cynical opportunist, but the fact that the cynical opportunist chose the secular agenda mm. as his banner indicates how powerful the secular agenda has become. Yes, if and you, you, would, you wouldn't have chosen you wouldn't have chosen it if the secular agenda wouldn't have been so powerful. So that's very okay. good news. Now, if you want to hear even more news, I have I have great news just from yesterday. Okay. Yesterday was the first time in the history of Tel Aviv. Where the municipality operated public transportation on the Sabbath, so Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, okay, yeah, Tel Aviv and and satellite cities around it are going to have public transportation on the Sabbath starting from yesterday, and this was an initiative of the municipalities. So it shows you that the sec- well, secular I thought agenda Tel Aviv was Tel Aviv. I thought Tel Aviv was already like that. I thought it was Jerusalem no, that it was so. Strong. No, no, it, no. Tel Aviv didn't have uh, public transportation. It was obviously very secular and open in many ways. But it did not have public transportation. It didn't have. You couldn't take a bus in Tel Aviv. Wow. You could take a taxi, other stuff. But you didn't have a bus line. Now you have bus public transportation run by the municipality. So wow. that it, that's the first time it, it's happening in 70 years, right? So At least. do we thank? Okay, so it wasn't. It's not Lieberman that brought these secular agendas. Other people have. Other people have worked for making these these secular agendas. Um, important for somebody as opportunist as Liberman to become take advantage of it, right? Yes. So what, what I want to correct me if I'm wrong, but what the people that are being unappreciated, the people that are not getting the the credit that they deserve, are all the activists on the ground, all the secularist group on the ground in Israel that have been fighting and fighting uh, and fighting well, of, to, of course. to make these to make these secular agendas important. Of now, final, now all of a sudden, uh, it's it's given. They're seeing the result of all the work that they're doing, so, right? And well, this I'm, was a, and this was such a thankless job in Israel because these people were constantly being accused of being traitors, of being anti-Jewish, of not being national nationalist well, enough. No, no, hang on, hang on. I don't think that secularists 
activists were that much smeared as you presented. And I don't think anyone would call them as tra tra of course, if the ultra I mean, I, people That's would. what I heard from secular activists in Israel. That's well, what they I, I have to tell you, I grew up as an atheist in Israel all my years, and even Where? in my... Uh, and and no one ever no one ever uh, I never heard anyone call me traitor because of that. They called me traitor for other reasons, but not because <laughs> I'm, no, right. not because I was an atheist. So, yeah, but you said since you left Israel, Israel has becoming more right wing. So you don't know. You have, you yeah, yeah, but but well. those but secularists are. You also have secularists amongst the right wing. Actually, the person who formed the league to the league against religious compulsion in Israel in the fifties. Right. was the son of Jabotinsky. Jabotinsky was the, the founder of the Israeli right wing. His son was an atheist who formed the League Against Religious Compulsion. So nice. fighting, fighting for secularism in Israel is not all, only a left-wing agenda. That, right. that's, a, that's, a optical, that's an optical illusion. I mean, uh, I, okay, so maybe not a secularist, but at least you, can you agree that the, the word atheist is a taboo word? Because that's what I hear a lot. No, Even instead of atheist... I, this is what I heard from a lot of atheists in Israel that the, I mean, this, okay. oh, maybe, maybe now I have to be honest because I've been out of the country for 12 years. So maybe now right. you cannot say, but I can tell you for a fact, there is a very good satire show in Israel uh, where they make their, they make fun of God all the time. I know. Of, and course. of course, all the time. they're so and, funny. The, I'm, I'm not saying they don't exist. I don't, I'm not saying they're not pushing back. But they do all of those things. But a lot of these people do feel some pushback from their co-workers. Not, not as much as like, oh, you government shutting you down or not being able to have a funny comedy on YouTube or on TV. Obviously, they get to do those things. But there is some, you know, social back, not, not a legal backlash, not a government backlash. Uh, just a bit of, there is a bit of a social backlash to them. A bit. Uh, well... If that's their experience, that I cannot I cannot argue with their experience. Okay. I would say I wouldn't say if that you was. Are, if you are an atheist in Israel, let us know in the comment section what your experience is like uh, to see. Uh, but by the way, what I base what I'm saying and what you're saying is anecdotes. So we yeah. don't know which one is true because I'm I'm relying on anecdotes and you're relying on your personal and anecdotes as well. We don't know what's yeah, but not that it's not valuable. But no, we... no. But, but I'll give you, I'll give, I'll give you an example to demonstrate. In the United States, it's very dangerous for any politician to be considered atheist. Yeah, mm. no politician would would say, you know, I do, I don't believe in God. Mm. In Israel, you do have politicians that are very comfortable with with being being seen as as atheists. They don't make any specific effort to pretend that they believe in God or that they follow their religion, and it's okay. They, their electorate still okay. votes for them, so it's far. I, I think it's it's more relaxed than you than than people think. But of course, if your atheist activist friends in Israel report otherwise, then it's bad news. It's bad news comparing to what I remember. Maybe it depends. Israel. Maybe your maybe your experience uh, varies depending on where you are and who you're communicating with, right? So uh, yeah, but it very uh, much depends on who like your environment like. The environment no, I, I I grew up in a, I grew up in a village where you had an ultra orthodox rabbi and uh, and a cross dresser and uh, all all in the same small. No, I'm not joking. I'm, well, I, I, no, but uh, I I was part of Tel Aviv that was so orthodox Jewish that like the I mean the experience like there there was this person that would with us uh, he was trans and he said that he uh, he had a lot of difficulty coming out to his family as trans. And he finally managed to get accepted, but he said he still would not come out as an atheist to them. Really? Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, I have to say that that's a bit shocking. I know. I know people that were ultra orthodox and became atheists, and it all depends on what family you come from. Some of them they are still in, in touch with their families and their parents. You know, they still love them and they still, you know, they can come and visit them. Obviously, when they come and visit, they have to dress more modestly because of the environment. But their parents still accept them and their parents still love them. And they just hope that maybe one day they will mend their ways. Others are completely boycotted and excommunicated. Right. So let's go. Going back to Lieberman's party, he yes. at the second election. He did, he decided not to work with the Likud party and not to work with the Blue and White party for different reasons. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
The reason why he didn't work with the Lakut party is because the Lakut party was uh, playing footsie with all these uh, religious nuts. And the Liberman was like, no, thank you. We're not going to work with any party that no, is no. working with. Okay. Okay. No, no. What Liberman said very slightly said, look, I'm will. I want a unity government provided mm. they accept those, you know, the Sabbath, you know, the right, right. Right. on the Sabbath uh, recruitment and the uh, civil marriage. He knew when he said that. He knew that, that by saying that, that he's excluding the ultra orthodox. Okay, so, so that was, it, and he, didn't that, say, he didn't have to say. He didn't have to say. I don't want ultra orthodox. Say. It was so, quite obvious that they're not going to sit in a government with him this way. So, and because the Likud was already working with those religious people, that means that they couldn't support the Likud party. But when it comes to the Blue and White party, is it accurate to say the reason why they didn't support the Blue and White party is because they got they were close to the Arab party? Well. <laughs> You're talking. If you want to, if you want the real reason, mm. I uh, there is another. I'll give you the proclaimed reason. The proclaimed reason is that he says we want a unity government. So obviously, if he says uh, the official reason is we want a unity government with the Likud and blue and white. So obviously, he doesn't want to support any blue and white government that doesn't include the Likud as a unity government. That's the official reason, mm. right? Unofficial. Obviously, he and now Lieberman said, and he said it out loud. We consider the ultra-Orthodox rivals, and we consider the Arabs enemies. He said that. So what? So, he used the word so enemies. He used. He said for us the ultra-Orthodox are rivals, and the Arabs are enemies. I have the to Arabs find are that enemies. Was, he said that exact word. Arabs are enemies. Like he's talking I, about I the. Have, I have to okay, find yeah, the exact yeah, quote. I think, the... I think. I think he spoke about the po- Arab politicians. Right. Oh, and you, I think if you ever challenge him, he said, "Of course, I didn't mean all Arab citizens are enemies." I meant the, those politicians of this and this party or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, this is not I, I a secular find... party that I want. <laughs> no, 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 that, no. That, that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. Lieberman is not a secularist, he's an opportunist. Mm-hmm. By the way, Lieberman's daughter, yeah. Lieberman himself, by the way, he lives in the West Bank in a settlement, and his daughter is, a, is has turned religious. His daughter is a right wing religious lady. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's not, yeah, he's, <laughs> don't, don't, don't put your faith in Lieberman as an atheist. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, so <laughs> Lieberman is just an opportunist, and I think what he's what he really ch- is trying to do is trying to ruin the right wing. He's trying to make it as hard life as possible to the Likud. So one mm. day the Likud will be so weak that his party will be the major party in the right wing, and he will be the re- leader of the but, right wing. So wait, but that you just finished really your previous thought. The real reason why he didn't work with the blue and white party was was the real reason because uh, he didn't want to work with the Arabs. I think that his real reason was he doesn't he wants to keep on this chaotic situation because the more this chaotic situation goes on, his party grows bigger yeah, and bigger. So he's, kind of, and then, cha- so he's uh, kind of like chaos is a ladder kind of guy. A la- sorry, what? He was he was like the kind of guy that thinks from all the chaos, from all the ashes, an opportunity. Yes. Will yes, yes, yes. So yes okay, was- like I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones, like he kind of no, like. No. Ca- Okay, so there's a quote in the Game of Thrones like chaos is a ladder, right? Like you could yeah. like from from all the mess that there's a, you could if yeah. every if everything is falling, then you are you're gonna there's be able classic, to get advantage of the vacuum. A, a classic potential dictator mentality. People <laughs> there is chaos, chaos, chaos. People are looking for a strong guy that would bring some order into the system. And guess who's gonna be the saver, yeah, the savior, uh, right? Right. So, so I think that's what Lieberman really wants to do. He simply wants to weaken and weaken and weaken the Likud party until one day he will either merge with them or replace them, and he will be the strong leader that's going to finally bring some order to the system here. Okay, that's, so, that's I think his real agenda. We're getting close to an hour, so we need to talk about the last top thing, which is yeah. what do you think is going to happen next? Okay, so I think, uh, well, it's hard to say either. So- it, no, it's hard to say. Yeah. Uh, either uh, they're go- we're going to have another election, and the Likud party will still weaken, keep on weakening, uh, or uh, Gantz somehow will manage to rally some parties uh, around him in those 21 days and it still come out. Seems very unlikely, though. Uh, quite, quite, quite unlikely. Mm-hmm. But uh, since Netanyahu is now. Uh, facing an indictment, it's no longer su- su- uh, suspicions, now he's, he's indicted, it will be far harder for Netanyahu to stay uh, as the leader of the Likud. If he wants 
remain the leader of the Likud. I doubt it if whoever will replace him will be as charismatic and as skillful oh. as he was, and the Likud will keep on weakening. Whether it would weaken and strengthen Lieberman, and Lieberman will become the leader of the right wing, or whether it would weaken and, and, the le- and by, by sheer proportion the center left will grow, I don't know. That's, so that's they, they, but, but, but if, the, if, if they manage to remove Netanyahu and find a leader fast, that's bad for Lieberman because they don't need his party anymore. Then the blue and white and Lakut could just form a government and they don't have to beg. That, that's bad for the Arabs. That's bad for the Lieberman. And it's also bad for the religious groups because they don't have to go. Nobody has to go start begging to these small but, groups. But the Likud, I think, I suspect the Likud will always go with the religious because they all, it's like an investment. They want to, to show them that they're good allies. Oh, you, so that we're not going to, we're not going to offend you. Yeah, for the mm. sake of the alliance for future elections, I think they will still uh, remain loyal to the ultra-Orthodox. That's, so my, that's my personal prediction. So for the sake of atheists and secularists, it's better if Netanyahu keeps trying to stay in power for a little bit more, No. So that, uh, people, so that well, people need to desperately be, go to Lieberman. It could be that the Likud will weaken to such a degree that by sheer, merely by proportion, blue and white will be so... Uh, because that's another thing that happened. Because Lieberman started talking about secularism, suddenly in blue and white you started hearing talks mm-hmm. about a liberal unity government right. and, and or secularist voices. So if so blue and white will be strong, if blue and white will be strong enough, we might just have a center-left party Okay. That might also promote some secular. Uh, so, even secular... If, so even if we get re- Lieberman's party doesn't go anywhere, the the, ben, the the good thing that happened is that he showed that there's a demand for that kind of yes. narrative, yes. and other people are now jumping on that narrative, and I, now yes. he might he might yes. have started a new norm, right? I think I think I think that was his major contribution, uh, yeah. albeit for ulterior motives, obviously. But okay. uh, yes, I think that was that was a very good tra- a very good um, uh, move or phenomenon in these particular elections that uh, that the I, secular agenda has become an issue to be discussed. So I hope, like in the third election, Lieberman goes from eight seats to like nine or ten. And if he goes from eight to nine or ten, then maybe it signals to the other people that, oh, it seems like this kind of narrative works. You know what I mean? Like, even if the Liberman's party doesn't get anywhere, if he just gets one more seat, they see that not only did he not get punished for pushing secular agenda, he might have even been rewarded a little Reward, bit. Reward, yes. And then maybe other people try to copy that narrative, right? Provide, provided prov- other people in the right, because the left-wing parties always spoke about it. I'm talking right. about the right-wing. Uh, center okay, and right. You say left-wing but, parties. Are you talking about the Labour Party or are you talking uh, about uh, Meretz, which is even left to left, more oh. left-wing to the Meretz, which is left-wing to Labour? But there's uh, how, what percentage are those? Those are like uh, no- they they got no they they got uh, either either five or six seats, so they're pretty much equal to to the Labour Party in their power now. Uh, okay, uh, which is which means we they're have- equally weak. They're not very strong. So we but, have two left-wing parties. We have yes. Labour. We have what? And what's that other one? Meret, Meretz. I'll spell it to you. It's M-E-R-E-T-S. Meretz. Okay. Yep. Okay. Meretz. Okay. Uh, so that uh, there was social democrat. I guess uh, more uh, social democrats. So but both a bit the Labour left- Party and Meretz, they have been talking about secularism, but they're very small. So uh, yeah, so but and the only, and another problem was as long as the as long as the left wing right wing debate was was act, was relevant, like uh, you know the peace process, two state solution. Wh- as long as this debate was still relevant, whenever the left wing saw an opportunity to form a coalition, he would give in to the ultra orthodox because he say, okay, let's put secularism aside because. It just might be that this government will bring peace and and, uh, and a final settlement with the Palestinians. So let's give it into the ultra orthodox, get them into our coalition, so we put, can wait. Who would put secularism aside? So for, I'll give you an example. In the elections of '92, Meretz, the the who who was very much for separation of religion and state, got a uh, 12 seats in the parliament. Mm. They were the the prominent partner of the Labour Party in the coalition, but they needed the ultra orthodox. Oh, to form a coalition because they wanted to push the Oslo agreement. They want to push the the, uh, uh, the negotiations with the Palestinians. So they caved in. They didn't 
mm. fight for recruiting them to the army. They didn't fight for civil marriage. They didn't fight for public transportation on the Sabbath. Why? They needed them into coalition because they were sure that they're going to bring peace to Israel now. So they said right. the, religion, the religious issues can wait. That was the tragedy of the left wing. As far as uh, okay, you know, what would you say? What would you say to people that say like, I, I really, do you think public transportation on Sundays? Why is that such an important issue? Can you Sundays is not, Sundays is not an issue at all in Israel. You're talking about Saturdays, but Saturdays. Uh, sorry, Christians mm-hmm. Sundays, um, Jews said they didn't fig- They never figured out when when it's Sabbath for so the Christians and Jews, right? Right. Yes. So, so. Uh, so why is it that public transportation on Sabbath is such a important topic? Like, or why is it that marriage or like we know? Okay, the army one. You explain why that's important. You know, you're breaking cults, right? But I think my correct me if I'm wrong. The reason why this is important is is these are just symbols. It's not just about being able to have public transportation on Sabbath. It's about the fact that you have a government run by religious rule or it's, 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 it just has opened the door for theology to get in the government right it, it's, a symbol, wanna, it's yeah. a symbol of domination it's a symbol, it's a of, domination. symbol of domination exactly it's it's, it's 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 to show it's to demonstrate that you know this country is still run to a degree by uh, by by the religious law Or, right. or I'll put it even more accurately. It's to show that the interpretation of the term Jewish state mm-hmm. has to do with religion. This is what it means. It means Jewish state means that sa- you don't go on, on bus on the Sabbath. That is Jewish state means that, it ha- that religion comes into it. It's not just a national issue. No, mm-hmm. we're going to show you it has to do with the religion. You're going to marry with the rabbinical court because this is a Jewish state. You're going to not use uh, public transportation because this is a Jewish state and that's a very dangerous once you allow once you allow once you allow public transportation on the Sabbath once you allow uh, you know civil marriage and you are still a Jewish state it's very challenging for them mm. it's very challenging here you can be a Jewish state without applying any religious law at all and you're mm. still a Jewish state right. that's the ch- that's the challenge. That's right. the bit. So, that's the bit that that I think I think it's mine. That's what they're really afraid of. Right, because they have they have a lot bigger plans than getting religion into government in many different ways, right? But if they if they lose what they already have, it's going to be very challenging for them to keep, go even deeper with the religious. It's, it's a trench. Yes, it's a trench warfare. Trench yes. warfare. You allow you allow public transportation. The next thing you're going to allow, which started to happen, and then then they put a stop to it. You're going to allow some supermarkets opening on the Sabbath. Uh. So slowly but surely, you're going to secularize the country. They're very scared of this because they, their young their young generation is exposed to this. Right. Right. So so, so it's very. Good. They should be scared. They should yes. be scared. <laughs> All right. Yes. This is good. This is some good news. All right. I'm hoping things going to go in the right direction. Oh. Did you want to add anything? Yeah. Before? I want. I want to add one more thing. You said who should we thank for for the. Uh, for the rise of the secular agenda, there is one person and another person we should thank, a right-wing person. He's the mayor of the city of Tiberias. Mm. And he, a few months ago, he decided to open business. Tiberias used to be a touristic city because it's on the Galilee Sea. Mm. But uh, it got to a point where you didn't have any businesses open on the Sabbath, even though it's a tourist city. And he, about a few months ago, decided to start opening the city on the Sabbath again. With bus lines and with businesses going on, and mm. he got so much support not only within the city. People from all over the country came to Tiberias just to show him to show the, their support to what's happening there. So oh. I think his, his name is Ron Kobe, and I think he deserves. Wow. A lot of, yeah, he's, I think he deserves a lot of credit as well for pushing for for. People came support. there to show their support. Like people all... came, people came because he he when he wanted to do PR for himself, he went. He went uh, on the Sabbath on on Saturday uh, to the uh, to the boardwalk in not the boardwalk what do you call it to the boulevard in Tiberias just on the sea on the lake and started talking to people just you know like every politician does to show support for for himself and then people came to the camera and said we came all the way from wherever you know places that you have to drive three hours to get to Tiberias wow. people came to the camera and said we came all the way from this place or the other place to show support to you good on you for what you're doing. Wow, this is how, this yeah. is how the huge there's 
it shows that there's a huge demand for secularism in Israel, right? Yes. Yes. I, I hope so. I hope so. All right. Well, you, you all, thank you so much for your time. This was very, very informative. Thank um, you. And nothing to do with Israel, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people in Israel are crossing their fingers for the brave people of Iran that are fighting for their freedom now. Uh, now. A, far, a far harder fight. So uh, I guess I can convey uh, support to them as well. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. I, f- and for anybody else that is fighting for freedom anywhere in the world, for people in Hong Kong, for people in Iraq, uh, for people in Lebanon, and anywhere yeah, else, definitely. Yeah. And if you guys, you will, if if people have questions, can you, they leave their questions in the comment section? Yeah. And then of course. Could, yeah. Okay. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to answer as much as I can. Okay, you will we'll come and check your comments and see if we can answer them. So we're talking about Facebook, Facebook comment or YouTube. Where's it going to be? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, great. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Thanks a lot. Right. Wait, Bye. wait, don't go, don't go anywhere. I'm just going to stop recording. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure.